In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to conduct a hypothesis test on single means. The data is from a random sample of grocery stores in the UK. Management will consider entering the market if customer demands for the product category exceeds 1750 units per store. The average demand in the sample is 1953 units. The question is whether you would suggest entering the UK market. Let's open Radiant and upload the data. There are some basic descriptions of the data. We have 572 observations with two variables. ID is a store identifier. Demand is the total category sales in unit per store. If we want to learn more about the variable demand, we can go to Explore, select Demand, apply the functions you need. The default ones are Number of Observations, Mean, Minimum, Maximum, and Standard Deviation. You can also delete or add other functions. Now you know the average demand in the sample indeed is about 1953 unit. This number is greater than 1750. Can I conclude that the management should enter the market? Maybe not, because we need to determine if the difference could be attributed to the sample error. That's why we need single mean test. From basics, click single mean. Our non-hypothesis is that the average demand in the UK is equal to 1750 units. So we enter 1750 into the comparison box. We will choose greater than for the alternative hypothesis because we want to determine if the available data provides sufficient evidence to reject the non-hypothesis and favor the alternative average demand in the UK is greater than 1750 units. Usually, we choose significant level alpha as 0.05. 1 minus alpha is confidence level. So here it is 0.95. You can also choose other values. Here, I just leave it as default. This is the result summary. The dataset name, variable name, confidence level, non and alternative hypotheses are printed here. Next two lines list mean, standard deviation, number of observations, and the number of missing values, which are the same as what we calculated under Data Explore tab. Diff is the difference between the sample mean and the comparison value. SE is the standard error. T value is the T statistic associated with diff, that is diff divided by SE. P value is the probability of finding a value as extreme or more extreme than diff if the non-hypothesis is true. DF is degrees of freedom, that is n minus 1, so it is 571. 5% and 100% shows 95% confidence interval around the sample mean. The range is 1897 to infinity. After reviewing the summary, let's help the management to make the decision. There are three approaches to evaluate the non-hypothesis. We will choose significant level of 0.05. The first approach is to check the p-value. Because p-value is smaller than the significant level, we reject the non-hypothesis and suggest management entering the UK market. The second approach is to check the confidence interval. Because the comparison value is not contained in the 95% confidence interval, we reject the non-hypothesis. In addition to the numerical output, to check the confidence interval, we can also go to plot. The solid black line shows the sample mean. The dashed lines indicate the confidence interval, and the red line is the comparison value. We can see the red line doesn't fall within the confidence interval, so we reject the non-hypothesis. 
The third approach is to compare the calculated p-value to the critical p-value associated with the significant level 0.05. We can obtain the critical value by using probability calculator. The distribution type is t-distribution. Degrees of freedom is n-1, that is 571. We will choose probabilities as input type. Since the alternative hypothesis is greater than, we set 0.95 as upper bound. The critical value is 1.648. The calculated p-value 5.967 is greater than it, so we reject the non-hypothesis and suggest entering the UK market. All three approaches will lead you to the same conclusion. Feel free to use the one you are most comfortable with. Thank you for watching. See you next time.